last ser series of slides that I'm, I'd like to show you uh, are in infected with the uh, plasmodium species, either vivax or falciparum. And I'll first start with uh, plasmodium vivax. Before you uh, start this slide, you, you need to remember the fact that there are cells in the blood other than those of the parasites. And this uh, is illustrated fairly well here where we probably have um, a, a small monocyte present get, given the fact that it has this little indentation in, in the nucleus and then the, the red blood cells. In and amongst the red blood cells you should see various developmental stages and in the case of vivax you, you may be able to find or you should be able to find uh, the various developmental stages everything from the, the, the signet ring trophozoite stage uh, to the schizont stages and, and you may even find some um, gametocyte developmental stages. With this, with the uh, video system it's difficult to, to get an uh, g effective enough resolution to sh show you very very well the, the developmental stages other than the ring stages. At the end of the pointer, for example, is is uh, what would appear to be a schizont stage when I look through the the objective lenses. However, at this point, at w in the video system, it's very difficult to to determine that. W one thing you want to look for is the presence of multiple nuclei that that is uh, the the definitive characteristic of uh, the schizont stage. You've got to be a little bit careful in uh, in doing that however because as you look through the uh, blood smear what you'll notice is that there are numerous individual red blood cells that are infected with multiple parasites multiple signet ring and those could also be multiple uh, schizonts in some cases and so use that characteristic very carefully this you'll obviously need uh, at least oil immersion lenses to before you can uh, even start to make those distinctions. When you look through the uh, when you look at the plasmodium falciparum blood smear, you'll what you'll notice is that there are are no schizont stages, and if you remember those particular stages develop in um, blood vessels that are um, closer to the center of the, of the body, the, the very large vessels, and so you don't see schizonts in peripheral blood. And so that's the only criteria that I'm going to ask that you use for making those distinctions. In the, in the slide labeled Plasmodium falciparum gametocytes, uh, the thin blood smear, you should be able to find the, the banana-shaped gametocytes present in the, the red blood cells. And uh, I'm not going to require that you tell the difference between a male and a f female or the, the macro and the micro gametocytes. If you can just simply recognize those as as the uh, as the gametocyte. You can actually see the gametocytes more effectively in the thick uh, blood smear of the Plasmodium falciparum specimen, and. Uh, What you'll notice in in the, that particular preparation is that there are no red blood cells, and typically the way they do this is expose the the blood smear to distilled water, that will lyse all the red cells, and most of the white cells. The gametocytes, of course, won't be harmed, and uh, if you if you think about it for a second, these gametocytes have to be built to withstand the conditions of the the mosquito stomach and so conditions that uh, that would otherwise harm the red cells don't have any effect on on these gametocytes 
and pe and the, the the people that diagnose malaria infections take advantage of that uh, because if if you remember from lecture the appearance of these gametocytes is often used as a as a means of differentiating one species from another this is a section taken from a from a uh, mouse that has been infected with malaria and then allowed to, uh, the and the infection is allowed to progress f uh, for a fairly long period of time. And this was a section, paraffin section taken from that. You should notice the, f the presence of the hepatocytes similar to what we saw previously in the Imeria slide. But in addition to that, you sh you'll you should notice that it almost appears that there's dirt or some other kind of material also present in that slide. And what that, that black material actually is, is the hemoglobin that was left over from the lysed red cells. And we talked about this in, in lecture, how the fact that uh, how the um, liver functions to clean up a lot of those infected cells and that the hemoglobin from the red cells tend to accumulate in the liver, causing a condition known as black liver. And not only is the, the liver black at the macroscopic level, but uh, also at the microscopic level, all the, the black fragments you can, you'll notice. <coughs> 